Hi, and welcome to the Green with Tiffany podcast. I'm your host, Tiffany Page. And in this show, we'll explore topics of sustainable living, all aspects of health and wellness of people and planet, and how we're all interconnected. Join us on this journey to live better and more sustainably by improving our health, our families, and the world with the choices that we make. We are here with Dr. April Gobel. I'm very excited to have you here. I have one. I know we did a little bit of a quick Facebook Live some time ago, but I wanted to talk to you in a podcast form in so long because you are so full of information. So I'm very excited to finally have this come to fruition. So Dr. Gobel is a chiropractor and she uh, graduated from chiropractic college, what, 17 years ago that you've been practicing now? That's so yes, wonderful. Like 17 years ago, I actually... Um didn't start practicing as a chiropractor right away. I went to work for an ENT specialist and started doing um, balance rehab. So quite a, quite a few things under my belt. Oh, wow. That, yeah. So there's lots to talk about there. But how I found her is through thermography, which is something that you've been doing for about 10 years now. Is that right? So this is right 10 years. digital um, infrared thermal imaging. And I just wanted to give a little bit of background on how that came about to me. I've always been into chiropractic care since I was little. My mom was really big on it as well. And I remember when I was like six or seven, I was horsing around with my brother and he threw me on the bed and my neck went click. And I was literally stuck like this. And off to the chiropractor I went and lickety split, I was fixed. So I was definitely a believer in that and have gone over the years for different things. So that's been wonderful. But what happened when I was about 30 is I went for my regular yearly pap smear. And um, I can't remember if I, I think I found it. There was like a little bit of a lump on the right side of my breast. And the doctor ordered a mammogram for me. And I was like, a mammogram? I think I'm so too young for a mammogram. But off I went by myself, which I also don't recommend when you're that young. But I went... And it was such a traumatic experience for people out there that have not had one. Um, They put your breast on like a, in this huge machine, but on like a plate within the machine. And then they compress it almost like a vice or, you know, I kind of picture it as like, I don't know if you're making a burger, a veggie burger for me, but pressing it down with like a spatula, you know, but think of it much harder. And, you know, they just really mush it. And I was just, I don't know, I was traumatized by it. Thank God it didn't turn out to be anything. Um, It was some kind of free floating, what would you call it? Like a fibroid cyst kind of thing. And uh, anyway, it went away and I was on a new, new journey to find something different than having to do that. So my mom actually told me about thermography. And uh, when I started green with Tiffany, actually one of my first sponsors was the remedy farm in Torrance and you were right next door. You guys were doing some kind of, you know, health fair. And um, anyway, that's how I met you. So I was very excited. So I've been seeing uh, Dr. Gobel since, I guess, like 2012 now. So what's really nice about this is what I wanted to get into is because it's been so long now, we've been, this is going to go into nine years. um, I have a nice baseline and you can kind of elaborate more what that is with the thermography and that kind of imaging. And, you know, and one more thing is you can actually use this type of imaging for many different parts of the body, but today we're, because it's specific to my story, we're going to focus on um, breast thermography. So thank you for being here. And yeah, if you could elaborate a little bit on what that means, the baseline and then moving forward for people. So we, we like to have two studies within three months of each other. And everybody has their preference as to how they want to do thermal imaging. And I just follow along with my training and how it was on my certifications. And so what we can see is within three months, if there's any change, we want to further investigate. So once we have the first one and then three minutes later, the second one, if there's no change, then then we're really, you know, fairly confident that, that that's your normal. Because that's what we're looking at. The breast heat signature, heat and cold patterns, it's like your fingerprint. So it's unique to you. So we can't compare one person's breast to another. There's not some template that we're looking at. We're looking at you. So anytime that you can get information early on and follow it through your life, then we know when you start to deviate from your normal. And, and that's why we would like to get a baseline. So I think that's you know really great because of the, the time frame. If you start young, 
you know, by the time you're maybe ready to do mammograms, if you don't have any kind of family history, if you end up doing them, then you've got like this nice outlay of what your breasts look like for all these years before you start, right? Right. And what we typically, we were talking about starting young, but we aren't talking about, you know, uh, teenagers or even <laughs> early 20s because hormones are all over the place and, you know, we can see fluctuations in, in tissues based on, you know, hormonal levels. So we want there to be stability and hormones. So, you know, we're typically, I, I have had, you know, a couple of younger people in their early 20s. But I typically, you know, around 24, 25, when things are a little bit more regulated, um, then, you know, I'm happy with that. Yeah. I mean, I happen to start um, fairly early, but I thought that was nice, actually, just because I'd had that little bit of a scare. So, you know, I had some kind of an outline of, you know, information on my breast moving forward. But to tell you the truth, I have not done anything else besides the thermography. And I know we talked about that. I had my session yesterday, actually. So we talked a little bit about that. And, you know, I think the the age to start mammograms is what, 50 now, they say, or is it a little bit younger, depending on your family history? Well, it does depend on your history, but um, the, the guidelines have, you know, they've been raised up into 50 and then every other year, but you'll find that a lot of um, medical doctors are still going by old guidelines. They'll start you younger and every year, but it's always, you know, better if you have a family history that you, you know, what's going on from a little bit younger age, but then, you know, there are there are ways to not get so much radiation from um, from having having too many mammograms, you know, or any type of radiation to your body. Yes, and that's another aspect of it that I was concerned with. And I'm always as as green with Tiffany. I'm always looking for holistic ways to help my body, heal my body, preventive and and whatnot. So what I followed guidelines, you can they did change over the years. And what I thought was so interesting is. And this was on the American Cancer Society, but it had said like they should start every year with a mammogram and then 55 and older moves to every two years. And I thought that was so interesting because I thought, well, as you get older, isn't it probably more common that you might have more problems then than earlier? And so wouldn't it be flipped like as you're younger, do them every two years and as you're older, do them more often if you were to go that route? So oh, with so many things, you know, we, we know it makes sense because <laughs> as we age, you know, it's our immune systems tend to decline. You know, um, we can't blame, you know, age on, you know, on, on everything that goes on because many people are amazingly healthy as they get older. But the, the norm is that it gets more difficult for the body to fight off those cancer cells that we can have at any time in our life. So we're constantly fighting them off if our immune system is working well, but it gets to be more of a struggle for the immune system after, you know, you know, you're 70, 80, 90. Yes, as you get older, you, you know, you might have that time when a stressor flips and those cancer cells get ahead of the immune system. And there you go. But, you know, we have a lot of things to consider, you know, insurance and, and aging and care of the elderly. <laughs> so along with thermography, I mean, it is FDA approved since 1982. I guess it wasn't approved as a solo method. I know I've been doing it that way, but there is also ultrasound. So there's different kind of modalities that you can use together, right? Right. So thermography is... A, um, a study of physiology. Okay. So that's how your body is functioning, how it is responding to what's going on. So physiologically, thermography is looking at the current activity in, in the breast. If we're looking at the breast, okay. Is there more heat due to an inflammatory process going on? Is there more heat due to new blood flow being created? Because a lot of tum tumors create um, more blood flow for them to feed and to flourish. So that's what we're, we're really looking at these, these heat signatures, but there, you know, there's also the other side of the coin where cold has indicators too. So yeah, I don't want to get, <laughs> I don't want to get too far off track, but when we're looking at physiology, we also don't want to miss structure. So we don't see structural things like we can with 
x-ray, uh, CT scan, an MRI, ultrasound. Those are your some of your studies that are typically used for structure. So structure means something that's actually there. So um, like we were talking about yesterday, a ca calcification, you know, you can see that changes that um, if you have a fibrocystic lesion that's dense enough, you may see it on, on x-ray if it's really clearly outlined. And if it's really dense, you know, and you can't see through it, then it will it will be picked up. But if you're looking at things that are really tiny, um, they can be overlooked. And, and I think that I brought up a radiologist, you know, potentially missing something because years and years ago, I worked in a radiology department and, and it did happen. The radiologist missed this micro calcification, like the grain of sand, you know, and years later they came back and, you know, um, they wanted all the records and there it was, you know, looking at it again, and of course it had grown and she had cancer, but now things are a lot, you know, better computer aided, you know, looking at things. So, um, you know, things have gotten, you know, more fine tuned, but structurally, I always say, you know, let's look at something that doesn't have radiation. You know, if you're just doing regular screenings, you, you know, thermography and ultrasound thermography and an MRI, you know, so that's, that's what I recommend. You really should have a test of structure and physiology. Now, whether you want to do those every year or you want to alternate, you know, we have to be informed to make those decisions, making those decisions with a healthcare provider that is, that is open to taking in your considerations. It's current with, you know, the potential, you know, risks versus benefits. So we can't just say that thermography takes the place of any structural test because it's not looking at structure. It's looking right. at what's going on in the background. But what I you know, really wanted to bring to awareness is for people that don't even know if this is an option. You know, it's not necessarily offered at your doctor's office. You know, I looked up the price of the mammogram machines because there's these enormous x-ray machines and mm -hmm. they're very expensive. They're, you know, like two hundred to five hundred thousand dollars and they are in they're already in place, right? So, and that's right. kind of the procedure that has been followed for all these years. And that's what people are moving forward with. So, and so, <laughs> you know, it's not necessary, necessarily something that's then going to be offered when these, you know, these other machines are already put in place and this already is done. So anyway, I really wanted to bring awareness that this is an option to use in combination with other things. You know, maybe it, it gives you the ability to do a mammogram less often you know, for less radiation while Absolutely. using the thermography as another tool. So I thought it was right. important to bring up. And um, I actually wouldn't have known about it if it wasn't for my mother. So I have my mom to thank. <laughs> Thanks, mom. <laughs> and wonderful. I also wanted to point out for, I mean, I live in Los Angeles and, you know, many, many women have breast implants here. And, you know, when you do a mammogram, I mean, it's not comfortable for a non-breast implant uh, person. So you know, I just wonder if there's any possible kind of damage that can be done and you won't necessarily know. It's not like you were going to hear a pop or something, but, you know, being compressed like that, you know, does it, does it cause any kind of problems down the line? And so I thought that, you know, thermography, like you said, along with like an ultrasound or even an MRI if needed, you know, that could be a little more non-invasive. <laughs> right. And, and the thing is with the, with implants first, the discomfort level might be even much greater because you're talking about something artificial that now your tissue tissue is bonded to. And so you're compressing that and, you know, potentially you might have pain, you know, for days after, instead of maybe just discomfort that day, you know, and, and I think that sometimes I'll even tell you, Oh, if you have discomfort, go home and ice. It's like, wow you know, from a mammogram, I might need to go home and ice, you know, something, my breast or my armpit. And so, you know, um, with implants, it might be increased. And since we're not even touching the tissue, you know, the camera picks up the heat from the breast tissue from a distance, we, um, you know, we aren't causing any harm at all. And, you know, heaven forbid, there's, you know, some um, integrity loss of the implants, and, you know, compression doing a mammogram might potentially cause a leak. And depending on whether, you know, you have um, the silicone or a saline, you know, the saline, if there's a leak, that's it. <laughs> you're just, you know, you're going to lose it. And, you know, it's absorbed in your tissues, but then you have, you know, the resolution to that is, is surgery. 
Yeah. So, you know, the more gummy type ones, the silicone and the, the gummy bear type, you know, breast implants, they aren't going to, to leak like that. You know, they, they will leak, but you know, it's not going to be a noticeable thing. And you might not know for a long period of time that you have a loss of integrity in the implant. Yeah. That's something um, that for you to kind of visualize out there is, so I went yesterday, I sit on a stool, the camera, it's great social distancing. I mean, you're definitely at least six feet away from me. Um, so there's no contact at all. Um, and you just kind of raise your arms and, you know, pictures are taken from different angles and, um, and that's it. So talk about non-invasive. I mean, you know, you're just flying free out there topless for a minute, but other than <laughs> that, it's totally fine. So um, I think it's pretty fantastic and painless and I think, uh, of great importance. And I hope more information comes out about how, how great thermography is to use in conjunction with other methods. Uh, yeah, but I did want to go absolutely. in a little bit about your chiropractics as well. It's really nice to be able to care for people, you know, so people are coming through, it's a very different model. It's just the, you know, the straight um, adjusting. So there aren't any therapies involved in that. Um, so there's a lot of wellness care and that's something that people, you know, need to look at for chiro- as far as chiropractic, it's not just for pain. We really are able to help the body function better. Okay. As long as we can reduce stresses. So emotionally, chemically, physically, you know, all of those things need to be addressed so that we can be more calm and the immune system can work better, but I'm very happy where I am. And, and I really enjoy all the different people that come through. That's so great. So great that, you know, I think chiropractic care, what's really nice about it. And unfortunately I've only gone when I've had pain, I haven't gone as like a regular therapeutic sort of wellness function, but it's been many times and um, you know, it really allows your body to heal itself, right. As you help the body put it in the proper places. That's something I think that, you know, people forget that your body can heal itself and you can do these preventive measures Actually, I remember I had this really bad like pain in my forearm and it was from my neck and I had, and, but I didn't know that. And when I went to the chiropractor, I don't think I went specifically for that, but I went, they adjusted my neck and literally instantly the pain in my arm poof, was gone. Pretty amazing. Right. And, and it doesn't always happen that way. It depends on how long it's been there. And, you know, I, I was, <laughs> I always think it's interesting because sometimes patients, they'll tell you some of what's wrong with them. And then they just want to see, you know, if they haven't been a a patient before. And so when they tell me, you know, I kind of hid this from you, but I want to let you know that after you adjusted me a few times, this, that, and the other thing got better. You know, I slept better. I stopped having headaches or, you know, my stomach pain went away, you know, and I just chuckled because I was like, well, that's, that's kind of neat. You know, it's like, okay, you didn't, you didn't, you didn't want to tell me because you were holding, holding that, you know, that thing back to see, you know, if something would get better. So it's always surprising, you know, when people are like, oh my gosh, I don't know what you did. <laughs> you know, we're just taking, we're just taking pressure off the nerves so that the body can communicate, you know, the brain and the body communicate. And when you do that, that allows for better healing. That's what I do. I love it. It's so great. And how did, what, how did you get into thermography from the chiropractic? So when we first met, when I was at the other location by the Remedy Farm, there was a local chiropractor that was doing thermography and um, not with the camera that I use. It was, there, there's a difference in cameras and technology. And I felt it was just an amazing technology and I didn't understand why she wasn't shouting it from the rooftops, you know, cause I was extremely excited. And so I started researching and, and looked at different, you know, ways of integrating it into my practice. And so I, I found, you know, what I felt was the best camera. I traveled to um, Fort Myers, Florida and got training and got my camera and flew back and, and have been doing it ever since. (laughs) Well, I'm so glad you have it. So we've got Dr. April Gobel here, and she is a chiropractor as well as a thermographer. And uh, I've been seeing her now for eight going on nine years. I was actually going every year. I looked at my file and I have 12, 13, 14. And then I don't know what time got away from me. I missed a couple years. Um, And now I, I didn't go for 20 because COVID hit, but I went, you know, 2019. 
So, uh, and now I went yesterday. So we'll get my results back and I will, um, I'll post them on socials, see what, uh, see what comes from that. But I just, I thought it was just really important because I know a lot of people don't know about, you know, alternative modalities that are more holistic for your body. And I definitely wanted to share that. Any, any last words you'd like to share? I wanted to add that a lot of times what I have done is followed women that have had surgery after. And so we can see the healing process, see if there's inflammation, see if there, you know, might be um, sometimes infection if something isn't, you know, the outside closes up, but we're looking at infection on the inside. So I have followed women's healing as well. So we can follow along after, you know, mastectomies or lumpectomies. And it gives people peace of mind to follow and, you know, see how they're doing and see if there's anything, you know, um, once you find something that gives you some information, having that tool in your back pocket is, is comforting. I think to a lot of people. Very comforting. And that is actually never thought of that such good information, especially because if you have had cancer, you know, I know you're still then supposed to keep going to mammograms, but that's just more and more radiation. And now I think they have these 3d mammograms. I don't know if they're more radiation or less, but uh, I think you can do the math there. So to follow um, people that are healing and to see the changes, you know, that, that, that must be a great way for people to, like you said, have peace of mind and to kind of really see what's going on. I, I just, I can't stress enough how important I feel it is to have these pictures and these images and watch, watch them over the years and of how, you know, how much information they can really tell you about your body. And like I said, you can use this, this thermal imaging for other areas of your body, but, you know, just for sake of time. And, and what we have had together is my boobs, (laughs) breast imaging. So, um, yes. (laughs) Yeah. I mean, I think even one time we did it and there was like even a little warmer spot once and we, you know, it was something we wanted to watch and then we did it again and it was, you know, it was cooler again. So Right. So that hormonal shift or inflammation in the body, um, you know, they can, they can shift, but through the company that I use, every scan that you have done is in the database. And so it's HIPAA compliant and the, the medical doctors that specialize in reading them, they get to see your whole history and see any changes. They can reference all of that. Which is really fantastic. So well, I thank you. I thank you for what you do. And thank you. And I will, of course, uh, put your information on how to get in touch with you. If you'd like to see Dr. Gobel, we can definitely make that happen. And I guess I will find out my results from you soon and then I'll see you next year. <laughs> yes, I will take a look. They might be back already. So, oh, okay, great. Well, thank you. And I'm going to post them, you guys. You can't really see anything, it's just, you know, like a shadow in color. It's kind of cool. It's almost like <laughs> artwork, actually. <laughs> It is. Yeah. You know, you could blow those up and put them on your wall. (laughs) You could. You could do them over the years, right? I'll do my 12, my 13, 14. (laughs) A collage. Yeah, there you go. (laughs) Collage, like an Andy Warhol collage of of foursome. Yes. Not a bad idea. That would definitely start conversations about what that is. And then I can go into thermography. (laughs) Wonderful. Absolutely. (laughs) I don't, I think people might know what it is. (laughs) Maybe. I don't know. I, you know, I tell people about it and nobody's, nobody knows that I've mentioned it too. I just, uh, yeah, true. I just wanted to sort of, you know, definitely raise awareness out there. So I think thank you, you for that. I thank you for the information and for spending your time here with us and talk again in the future. All right. You have a wonderful day. Okay. Thank you, Dr. Gobel. Thank you so much for listening. I hope you enjoyed the show. Please rate, review, subscribe, and share on Apple Podcasts. It would mean the world to me. You can find me at greenwithtiffany.com and on Instagram. Till next time, choose to care.